Alright, welcome to another Quadrant VS video, and in this video I would like to talk about um, the best setup for a Steam and home streaming server. And I'm going to grovel on this for a while because uh, I was having problems and I sort of want to go over what you need to have set up in order to get Steam and home streaming working. So let's go over the basics. You want a computer, but you want a fast computer. Alright, <clears throat> don't get no Pentium 4 with GeForce 5500FX and 2 gigs of RAM and think that's going to get you going. No, you're going to need a really fast gaming machine. Something that's up to spec, something that can play any game at 1080p, high settings, because what's happening in Steam and home streaming is it's encoding, it's actually um, playing the game, it's rendering the game, and then it's encoding the video so that video can be sent over the wire to the client machine which is going to decode that. So your computer is doing two things at once, you have to realize that. So an adequate processor will do. A quad-core processor that is not an Atom will do. Uh, a pretty good quad-core. Um, <clears throat> uh, some of the AMD FX series. Uh, 3 gigahertz or more, I would recommend. Uh, or if you're going to get an Athlon, make sure you overclock it. I, I, I wouldn't recommend that as a back-end, but if you are really on a tight, tight budget, you can get away with the Athlon X4, something really close to 3 gigahertz, or overclock it, because that's what I'm going with. Uh, here's my machine. This is an FX... Uh, 8320 clocked at 3. Point, overclock 3.76 gigahertz and um, the video card is a 7970 16 gigs of RAM SSD 1 terabyte drive it's got all the you know ins and outs 750 watt power supply everything you need for a powerful gaming system um, what you could get away with is a what my setup which is going to be a 7950 uh, 4 gigs of DDR3 and uh, an a Athlon X4 and um, Windows 7 of course 64-bit please have 64-bit <laughs> and um, yeah so anyway uh, I, I sort of went off on a, on a dive there but what you're gonna need is a powerful gaming system alright you're going to need gigabit Ethernet so here's my gigabit Ethernet switch and that's because I have gigabit Ethernet all over the all over the place so that's why I have a switch here but uh, the reason why you're going to need that is when it goes to send that Steam and home streaming signal, uh, you know, th that game stream over the network, <clears throat> what's going to happen is when you're doing it over wireless, it's not going to be consistent. Everybody knows that wireless is not a good, you know, consistent signal. It's convenient, but it's not consistent. Um, so you're going to need something uh, like this. You're going to need gigabit Ethernet. Uh, so the best way is to bypass your router. Try to have it be all behind your router. So your Steam and home streaming server is uh, connected to something like this switch and then your client is connected like mine is. It's coming from here to here. Uh, make sure it's behind the router. If you can't afford it, I mean if you can't avoid that then that's fine. But a lot of these routers today, if you don't buy a Doxus 3, have megabit ethernet and you can get away with megabit ethernet but uh, and megabit Ethernet meaning 10100, not 10100 1000 gigabit Ethernet. Um, I would reckon gigabit Ethernet because the bandwidth is there and um, Cat6 cabling. It's not that expensive. Um, you can get away with Cat5e, but just to eliminate everything, go with Cat6 gigabit Ethernet fast gaming machine down there. Now, the client, what do you want for the client? Now, the client can be something simple as a Surface Pro. This is a Gen 1 with Intel 4000 graphics. 4 gigabytes of DDR3L and a uh, 1080p screen uh, and a uh, Atom. No, no, this has got an i5. Um, I forgot what's the version i5, but it is an Ivy Bridge processor. But this is what I have. This is what you can get away with. So this is an Intel Atom uh, uh, back end. I mean front end. This is the little client machine I use to consume media. I just it's basically a media center PC. Um, just so I can watch TV and play the occasional game. And of course, that's over Steam at home streaming. So this machine specs, it's got 4 gigs of RAM, you can get away with 2 on the client end. Uh, it's got an NVIDIA GeForce 520 or something like that. Uh, you can actually get away with something like that or even lower. As uh, long as the graphics chip is... I mean, if it can play 1080p videos without hiccup, then that's the chip you want. That's what you want, want to look at. If it can play a 1080p file, then it can play do Steam and Home Streaming because Steam and Home Streaming is nothing but an H.26 file being streamed over your network. Uh, four gigs of RAM, an Intel Atom, 
uh, I can't remember the model number. I think it's a D5200 or something like that. Uh, don't quote me on that. But that's a quad-core processor. It's actually a dual-core processor, but it's got four threads. So, yes, you can have a front-end Atom. Um, I've actually seen this play on my Surface fine. I've seen it play on this fine. And I got okay results on my old laptop from 2007 running a Core Duo and uh, 2 gigs of RAM. Of DDR, I think it's DDR2 RAM. Um, in a video chip with the Intel Quadro, I mean NVIDIA Quadro, but a really old Quadro. So your front end can be weak, but don't make it too weak. You want, Again, if it can play a 1080p file without skipping, there's nine times out of ten it can do Steam and home streaming. Um, but, you know, make sure it's got gigabit, Ethernet, so forth and so on. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I, I, I just want to do this short video um, because... As you know, Steam and Home Streaming Part 3 is coming up, and uh, I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek. That's the box. So, that's the box that's going in. That's all I can give you. Um, but I just want to do this video just to clear some things up. Now that I have it working, I feel that I'm a... Um, I'm not an expert, but I'm knowledgeable on the subject, so if you want to ask me some questions, put them in the que comments below, and I would definitely be sure to get to you. As I've been working on this project for a year, I think I can set my time aside to answer comments. So, thanks for watching, and uh, this has just been some tips for Steam and Home Streaming, how to get it to work. Let's just go over it before I kill the video. You're going to need a powerful gaming machine. That's going to be your back end. That's going to be your server. Okay? You're, you're going to want something pretty fast, a uh, nice, fast quad core, 3 gigahertz or above, um, uh, enough space for your games, of course, um, quad core processor. A video card, 7950, 7850 or above. I would recommend something like a R9 280X or something. Um, just to, you know, if you're going to be playing at 1080p, yeah. Um, four gigs of RAM, minimum. And um, in your power supply, you should know what kind of power supply you would need. Because um, that doesn't directly hit your performance. But if you get a weak one, you'll, you'll start getting you know blue screens and stuff like that. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, put your questions below and um, I will be sure to answer them okay I forgot to throw this in so this is going to be thrown in at the end of the video but uh, the last thing you, need, you want to have configured once you have all your hardware in order your client your server your network uh, when you go to play the game you want to change these settings at the client end I repeat have these settings changed at the client end so you can get the best performance or you're going to be getting all the crazy results I was getting before I finally got to my solution. So um, what you want to do, get your Steam open, click on Steam, click on Settings. Alright, got to block out my email address here, but um, you want to go ahead and select the Steam in Home Streaming option over here on the left. Okay, and as you can see, um, you are going to have uh, options here for you know for your streaming so make sure enable streaming is on or you know and actually enable streaming really might be for the s server side of things but have it checked or I don't think it'll work so enable streaming make sure that's checked your host options go ahead and click on advanced host options these are a must if you don't have a really really super duper like Core i7 $1,000 system setup um, have these on um, because I've gotten the best results with these checked. And make sure your client options are on fast. That will introduce some slight artifacting and lower quality, but it's not as noticeable as you think. So if you want to have it on beautiful, it's going to push more quality, but it's going to affect your performance. You should know how that's going to work. So go ahead, click on the advanced client options. I have mine set to unlimited, but if you are on some sort of like LAN bandwidth limit, if you are on a megabit LAN or fast Ethernet, make sure you have it set to something that's not unlimited. Um, have it set to automatic. Um, I have seen automatic be a little glitchy at times, so uh, you can have your set to unlimited, but you know, again, you know, if you're, if you're running at 1080p and everything, you're going to really be stressing the, the, that fast Ethernet bandwidth. So fast Ethernet is only capable of 12 megabytes per second, so you might want to select 10 megabytes per second, or even 5. It'll play fine at 5, but, you know, again, quality is going to be uh, affected um, the lower your bit rate is going to be. So um, 
again, it all depends on you. Make sure your resolution's not, you know, 480p unless you're playing on a CRT monitor or something. But 1280 by 720 will do you very well. But if you really have balls to the wall system and you got all your network things figured out, uh, 1080p will look beautiful. And um, or you can just set it to desktop resolution, which is basically your native Windows resolution. So, yeah. Um, other than that, that's all you need to set up. Okay, to save, and that should be all.